In today's video, I want to show you how to create this super cool, smooth AI transition that you guys can easily create using Final Cut Pro 10 and with the help of Adobe Firefly, which will help with the AI aspect of it. So here's the video we're going to be using. So what I want to do is I want to start the effect around here. So maybe around 20 frames, press command B to split the clip. And then I'm going to go ahead and play it through. And I want it to stop around here. So a second and 15 frames, command B or press B and make a cut there so once you've made those cuts it should look something like this so now we have only this clip that we want to affect okay so what we're going to do now is go over to the effects and we're going to go down to the mroto ai plugin from motion vfx link is in the description if you guys want to get a free trial and try this out for yourself it's really cool i'll show you guys this very quickly you can skip over this if you don't want to use the mroto ai plugin and just manually use the draw mask for that you would go to the masks and keying we're gonna go with the draw mask just click and drag or you can just double click so go ahead and add that onto your video and then you would just select your subject in this case we're going to be selecting the g-wagon so i'm selecting the entire truck just like this or suv whatever you want to call it so you can do your selection just like this i'm going really quickly here of course you might want to take your time with this but this is just really rough here and it will look like this once it's finished of course depending on how much movement your video has it's better if you have very smooth panning shots like this it just makes the you know the actual keyframing so much easier to work with now we're going to go back to the mroto ai so this is the portion where i'm going to show you how to use it with the uh, plugin for motion vfx it's very simple you would just of course install the m installer which looks like this and you just go over to plugins and go to the mroto ai once you've downloaded the free trial or if you paid for it you can just go ahead and install it i already have it as you can see if you guys go in the description again you can sign up using my affiliate link and uh, i'm to go over to the emroto so it should just be in there and just drag that onto your clip what you would do is just paint over your subject uh, in this case i'm going to start at the beginning here so we can just check forward so i'm going to just kind of draw over it very roughly and it does an excellent job you have the eraser tool here and you have if you click this you can use the brush tool or the automatic quick selection tool which is the one that i like to use here you have output it just allows you to change this to mass video so you can see the output but i'm going to go to merge for now and then you can of course change the smoothness and uh, we're going to go back to merged and now we're going to go to the tracker and we're going to track forwards because we haven't tracked any of this so go ahead and click the track forwards button and then this will bring up a new window it's tracking our subject in real time we're going to set this back to mass video so we can see the clip beneath and we're actually going to duplicate this clip now so hold option and click and drag upwards now select the bottom clip and delete the mroto ai because this is going to be our background clip with nothing applied so i'm going to rename this so we don't get confused so rename clip i'm going to name this main bottom clip no effects and then this is going to be our masked clip so we're going to rename this to masked video we're going to save this image here because this is where the effect is going to start so i'm going to go over to file i'm going to go down to share and go to save current frame if you don't have this click on add destination and go to the destinations over here and you should have the save current frame, but you probably won't have that. So what you can do is just click the save current frame and add it here. I've already done that. So then just switch the export format. It may be TIFF, so just change it to JPEG. And that way it exports as a JPEG and no other file. Once we're here, we're gonna go to file and then share and then save current frame. So wherever we are in the timeline, it's going to save that exact frame. So Go ahead and save that and then save it to your desktop and then we're gonna go over to adobe firefly which i'll leave a link in the description all right guys so i'm now in adobe firefly you can go to firefly.adobe.com link is in the description you should be able to try this out if you have like the creative cloud plan or membership with adobe there's going to be a bunch of settings here by the way so you might you not know which one but you actually want to use the text to image which is the new reference image feature that they added a few days ago and i'm going to name this uh blue g -Wax in click on generate the aspect ratio we want to change that from square to widescreen 16 by 9 and then the content type you can do photo or art if you want it to be more realistic just go with photo but what we're going to be doing is doing art just because it's more simple it's more straightforward and then structure so this is very important so now we have reference here if you go over to the eye icon it says add a reference image to match its outline and depth so this is where we actually use our image that we just exported from final cut pro so go to upload image and i named it image one and it looks like this it's in 4k so click on upload the strength is very important you want to drag that all the way to the right and then styles this is the visual intensity 
go ahead and upload the image again, which is the same one that we have for the structure one. So click on upload and then the effects here. This, what we want to do is go to digital art. Okay. So we want digital art. So it's art, digital art. And for movements, we can do cyberpunk themes. We're going to do 3D just so it looks. So we're going to click on generate and you're going to see the amazing results that you get with this. Okay, so here is our result. It used the reference image and, and the structure to pretty much generate our image. I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to click on download. So this is where you can download your image or you can go and press this here. So I'm going to click on download and it will probably give you a another disclaimer. Just click on OK. And now we're going to jump back into Final Cut Pro or whatever editing application you use. We're going to drag our image that we just downloaded from Firefly. So here's our before and after. You can see how close it is to the original. So I'm now going to trim the end, extend this out a little bit on both ends, actually. Because we have our mass video, we can actually use that as a alpha video so that we can mask out our image, which is this one, without having to manually create keyframes. So the way you do that is you use the mask video that we used from the Motion VFX plugin. We're going to duplicate that clip, so hold Option and just drag it above our main image. So now we're going to switch this to black. So go over to the color board. I'm going to make the exposure all the way down to global so that it's negative 100. It has to be black. Uh, the whole image. Otherwise, this will not work. And then you're going to change the blend mode from normal to stencil alpha. And there you go. You just literally cropped out your image using this. What you're going to do now is just select both of those clips, hold option G together to make a compound clip or a groups clip. And I'm going to name this G wagon one. And there you go. So now we just mess it out. And because there's not too much movement, we don't really have to keyframe or track the image because it goes by pretty quick. So we're going to go over to mask and keying, go to the shape mask and add that onto the this clip here. So now what we're going to do is just drag this up and kind of make it like this. So this outer red line adjusts the feather and then this inner red line controls the overall scale of everything. And then these green points controls up and down and the side green circles controls left and right. And this controls the amount of curvature. So I'm going to go about here and this smaller green circle towards the middle controls the rotation. So I'm going to rotate it like this because I want it to go like that. You also want to make sure that this is tall enough to cover the length of the car. So I'm going to go to 25 percent. I'm going to make this way taller like that. And I'm going to zoom back in and rotate it like that. So I kind of want it to go like this from top left to the bottom right. We're going to position this all the way out of the car in this case. OK, so we're going to go to the beginning of the clip and go over to the shape mask and go to transform and add a keyframe next to position. You could add one next to the rotation and scale if that's going to adjust it at all or anything for you, but that's fine. Just add it next to position and go to the very end go one frame to the left and we're going to click and drag this all the way over here. So kind of like that out of the frame or out of the <laughs> out of the car. And now you can see this really cool effect as you can see here. I did mention that you can get an X-ray effect. So for that, you would just type in X-ray in the prompt and you can use the, you know, the image that it generates for you in the same exact position without having to change anything at all. So over here under the under the prompt, you can type in X-ray and when you type in X-ray and you click generate, so it could look something like this, which looks absolutely nuts. So I'm going to go with this one. I think this looks really cool and I'll show you guys that you, can, you don't even have to do anything else. So look, I'm going to click download and I'm going to drag in this image here. So in the in position of the other one. So what you would do is go in here and we're going to command C because this is the clip with the stencil alpha. So we're copying that clip and we're pasting it above our new clip or our new image. We're going to drag that beneath. So here's our mass video. So what I want to do is use this as a stencil alpha. You can see I've already done that because it's, you know, we just copied and pasted. And then all you got to do is just select those two clips and then name this G Wagon 2 because it's a new one. And now you have the same exact clip. And then all you got to do is because we have this one here, you can just press Command C and select this new clip, press Shift Command V all together. And this will paste all of the same settings and you don't have to do it all over again, which is kind of nice. So that's in case you don't like the reference image. So I like this one way better and I'm going to delete these actually. What we can do is duplicate the clip again, hold Option and just duplicate it. And then you could offset it a little bit so that it keeps going again. So here's the first one. 
and then the second one can come after like around here. So this is the new one right here on the left side that you're seeing. And then what I want to do though is the second wave or this reveal over here, after this, I wanted to reveal the uh, the color of the car. We're gonna create another grouped clip. So hold uh, Option G on this one, and I'm gonna name this G2, and do the same thing for the other clip. So Option G, I'm gonna name it G1. Okay, so now if we go back and I push play, so far we've come to this point right here, which looks absolutely incredible. Now what we wanna do is make the car black and white though, to begin with, so that it reveals the actual color in the end after this second wave here. We have our masked video here. So if I disable this, you can see this is our original clip, right? with nothing added. So we could just extend this out like this because it's still masked out over here and Roto. We just need to track backwards so we can do something like that. So go to tracker and track backwards. And then we're gonna do the same thing for this one. Track forwards from that point. In your case, you would just extend this area and then you know adjust your keyframes accordingly. This is fine for now and I'm gonna cut those. So Command B to split the clips. And then at the beginning, we're gonna go over to the color tab now because we've masked out only our car. So we can go over to the saturation tab and just bring this down and this will only make the G-Wagon black and white. So I'm gonna extend this all the way out and I'm going to track backwards as well. Okay, there we go. So now we've tracked the entire beginning portion and of the car, in this case, the G-Wagon. And now we have it in black and white. We want it to stay black and white for this clip here. So go over to the color inspector tab. We have it right here where we added one. This is where we adjust the black and white. So just bring global here and add a keyframe. So at negative 100, add a keyframe. It's now black and white because we moved it all the way down. Once it goes to the second one, which is this one, I want it to reveal the color beneath. That's the first one. And then the second one comes in right here. So right there, I'm going to press Command B to split the clip because we don't want to affect the rest of the clips. And then we're going to go over to the effects and we're going to mask and we're going to add another mask to this clip. So go to draw mask and add that onto that clip there. And then you're going to just make a few points. Where is it? Here it is. So just add a few and something like that. So now at this area in time, in the timeline, we're going to go to the control points, add a keyframe next to that, and under transform, add it next to position as well. And we bring this back to, you know, back to zero at 100%. So we're just gonna erase that actually. We only want it to affect this portion here. So just invert the mask now. On this clip here, we now have under saturation, the global is all the way down with one keyframe. Go to the draw mask and go frame by frame by pressing the right arrow key. And you can now see that this is showing the uh, color beneath it, which is what we want. So now we just want to move these points over so that we don't see any black and white as it's kind of panning through the car to the right side of the car. So we're just moving it just like that. And then right here, it finishes off just like that. So this can be a little bit confusing, so I try to slow it down as much as I could. We now have this really cool effect. If I go back and push play, it looks absolutely incredible, and you can do it to any object. You can, of course, go to my website, kingtouchbro.com, where I have a bunch of free editing packs and a whole bunch of other really cool music video overlays. The one that I used is the punch hole overlay from the punch hole transitions pack. There is a free sample for this one as well. But the way you use this is you just match up the punch hole to the name extension. So we have the glow version and the normal version. This is the glow version. So you can just drag it above your media like this and you're done. Just make sure you add or the corresponding alpha clip number four. So you can see four alpha and then four top glow those match just make sure that the glow is above the alpha at all, always now if i go back and i push play we have this smooth mask transition uh, reveal effect and uh, i will catch you guys next time